Singapore will speed up COVID-19 vaccinations, looking to fully inoculate two-thirds of the population by early August. Preparing new guidelines for vaccinated individuals with measures to be eased as more people get vaccinated. And for more, we are joined by Dr. Dale Fisher, Chair of the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network at the WHO and Professor at the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine in U.S. Well, Professor Fisher, now new clusters, more cases, more variants. How much do you think that these factors affect Singapore's reopening uh, even when more people get vaccinated? Yeah, thanks, Otelli. Uh, we're, we're currently in a transition phase, right? So we're moving out of the, the, the pandemic phase uh, and we will eventually be in a, a future state where the disease is endemic and it's a mild disease in anyone that's vaccinated. Uh, the RNA vaccines are proving very effective against severe disease and that's what we want. So um, what we're seeing now is, is all the deaths and almost all the severe cases are happening in unvaccinated people. So so that's the future. Cases and clusters eventually won't matter. They matter in this transition phase, but but they but but eventually we won't even be tracking them anymore. It'll be more like a, a, a common cold for the vaccinated people. Well, given all the variants uh, that are emerging, is there a possibility though that current vaccines may become ineffective against them? Well, it, it's why we study them, them, Steve. It's uh, it, we have variants of, of interest. I think there's about seven of those. There's uh, four major WHO variants of concern or, or six if you follow CDC. So we, we watch them. We're, we're looking for epidemiologic changes, clinical changes. We link that to the, the genomes. We're trying to get as much whole genome sequencing done as possible. So, so you know, we, we hope it doesn't become ineffective against severe disease. And, and in general, it hasn't yet. Um, but it's obviously the, the concern. Now, Professor, let's talk about another non-mRNA vaccine that's arriving at the end of the year, Novavax. Um, help our viewers understand, how is it different to Sinovac? Uh, it's really about the, the regulatory challenges. Singapore is, is very uh, strict in guaranteeing safety and efficacy, clearly more strict than, than WHO. Um, and the WHO has got a, a mass market to look after, but but Singapore, uh, really the only people that can't uh, get vaccinated that now are those with with allergies to to uh, the RNA viruses. Um, now, what Singapore does is they look at the the trajectory of the vaccines, they look at the type of work they're doing, and and whether the trials, the the methods of the trials, are addressing the safety and and efficacy adequately so that it'll be able to pass the regulatory authorities. So, so and in fact, this is how Singapore has worked throughout its, uh, its vaccine procurement process, is that they, that they look for those on the, on the right trajectory that are most likely to make it. And, and if they do make it, they've answered all the questions that our, our authorities will, will need. So Sinovac, of course, hasn't uh, answered all the questions yet. Uh, that's why we, we have it, but it's not authorised. But they're looking at Novavax and, and I'm sure others uh, that, are, that are, are going to meet this need for people that are intolerant of RNA vaccines. Now we learned today that new guidelines are in the works for those vaccinated to get certain concessions from pandemic restrictions. What about those who can't get jabs due to pre-existing medical conditions or, or personal reasons? Well, I think Singapore has been very particular in, in not discriminating against people who haven't had the opportunity to be vaccinated. Uh, there, there's never been any segregation uh, like we've seen in other countries in terms of mask wearing and things like that. So, so I don't believe concessions will be introduced until everyone's had the opportunity. And obviously we're not there yet, but, uh, but we're months away. Um, as I mentioned, the only contraindication now is, is severe allergy to RNA vaccines. Uh, we certainly ask uh, oncology patients, uh, cancer patients, other immune suppressed people to maybe talk to their doctors and see if there can be a window in their treatment uh, where the vac vaccine is more likely to be effective. But again, it's not a safety issue, it's an effectiveness issue. Um, people that don't want it for personal reasons, uh, uh, 
Uh, I think that's their personal choice and, and I doubt there'd be an exemption uh, for those. Um, also, Professor, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've said that COVID-19 will be endemic here in two to three years at a webinar today. Uh, can you share more with us? Why not any sooner? OK, so, so let me clarify that. Uh, there's a few different ways of looking at endemicity. You could argue now that it's already endemic. It's here. It's going to stay. Uh, but in scientific terms, we look at endemicity as as having a predictable baseline, um, one that's manageable. Um, in all likelihood, it'll be seasonal, similar to flu. There might be some year-to-year -year variations, such as with dengue. And these are, are the typical uh, endemic conditions in Singapore. But uh, the resting place, I think, will take a few years because other countries have still got different levels of pandemic and, and, and it'll take a few years for that sort of dust to settle. But that's not to confuse it with endemic policy mode uh, as opposed to the endemic scientific approach. Uh, endemic policy mode will, will certainly be sooner, I, I believe potentially by the end of this year, where we have 80% of the eligible population vaccinated. And then, then we can say, look, we're really not waiting for anything else. So let's leave these social restrictions, the border restrictions behind us stop closing businesses, stop quarantining people, and let's just live with it as a, as a mild, because it'll be a mild disease in vaccinated people. So, so that'll be that sort of endemic health policy mode, I, I, I believe, as opposed to the scientific side. Mm. Well, thanks very much for the clarification, Dr. Dale Fisher, Chair of the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network at the WHO and Professor as well at the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine in US.